upon the Superior Court is now in session. Judge George Spaulding presiding. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is my duty to prosecute and your duty to convict or acquit these seven defendants. These seven people are on trial either for murder or being accomplices to the act of murder. What they did, they did gladly and with full understanding. They are evil, all of them, seven evil people. Look at them carefully because they are your enemies and the enemies of every decent citizen. They're at war with you and always have been and always will be. Should they escape this time, the next victim may be you or you or you. Study their faces, all their faces. First, this one, Holiday Carlton, murderous. Charles Weber, John Reese. They were policemen, ladies and gentlemen, guardians of the law, accomplices to the act of murder. Keith Mandon, formerly an attorney, now the shame of his profession, accomplice to the act of murder. Peter Cobbett, formerly a guard at the state penal farm, another supposed guardian of the law, accomplice to the act of murder. Victor Mason, habitual criminal, clothing his crimes in a coat of respectability, accomplice to the act of murder. Joseph Rayner, murderer. Well, there they are, ladies and gentlemen, all seven of them, and only seven. There should be eight, and believe me, I'm sorry that there are not. But unfortunately, the eighth, the man who motivated this whole vicious and sinister crew, the most evil man of all, is not present. And yet he is here, in spirit, as you will find when the state rests its case. The first witness for the state will be Peter Cobbett. Peter Cobbett, take the stand. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Take the stand. Your name is Peter Cobbett? Yes, sir. You were formerly a guard at the state penal farm. Yes, sir. Would you be willing to make a statement before this court? Yes, sir. Proceed. Well, sir, I guess this all began one morning about four months ago. Real early in the morning. Uh, about five o'clock. All right, kiddies, all right, let's go. Well, uh, this is gonna be a beautiful morning. And the little old sun is going to be shining down on your heads all day long. And the birdies are going to be chirping to you from the trees. Ain't that cute? And all you boys are going out and playing the dirt. Just like when you was kids again. Come on. Rise and shine. Well, you know it ain't everybody can be lucky enough to be out playing in that sun on a beautiful day like this. Yeah, that's the way. Everybody's going to be crazy to get out in that beautiful sun and take a handful of them little old seeds and plant them in that little old earth. <laughs> oh, we'll make farmers out of you if it kills you. <laughs> I saw in the paper the other day where some fella said there's too many stick-up men and not enough farmers. <laughs> Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that for you. Now, just put on your little shoesies and wash your little hands and, and faces. faces and get out of here. Come on, you guys. Get up. Come on. Stop moving. Come on, shake it up. Keep you. moving. Come on. About seven o'clock, relax. relax. 
bus is going to be by here pretty soon. All right. Anything to keep you quiet. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you? You hungry? You eating dirt? Boy, a man would think you didn't like the food you get around here. <laughs> well, I've got a fever. I'm burning up. I need a drink of water. Falling out. Second squad. Okay. Come on, come on. We'll get you a nice little drink. Over here. What's the matter with him? He's got a fever. <laughs> He's burning up. Go ahead, go on down and get your drink. No, you don't get prisoners like we got 10 or 15 years ago. They were good and tough in those days. <laughs> Fellow might as well be a guard in a female seminary for all the work you get now. Any tobacco? Sure, help yourself. Hey. Well, they're not very tough today. <laughs> Sure, that bus was going to come while they were gone. Well, it didn't. When things get done by an expert, they get done right. Yes, sir. That's the bus, all right. If we get another horn in five seconds, we'll be in business. That's it. All set? You think there'll be any shooting? Won't matter if you zigzag. Hey, hey! What do you guys think this is? An Easter egg hunt? Now stop John and scatter out. That's what you say, Caesar. Oh! Now through the head. It's too bad. And one of the guards got lucky. If he hadn't stopped, it wouldn't have happened. Shut up. Shut up! How many guards did you get? I didn't count. You want to go back? No, thanks. Just say the word and we'll do it all over again. There's some clothes up here in the front seat you better change. Not those. Try the other ones. Oh, fancy. Better than what you're wearing. My name's Rayner, Joe Rayner. Just call me Jinx. I'm Ralph Carter. Pleased to meet you. Even the air out here smells better. Oh, it's great to be alive. Say, Jinx, you better stop at some quiet gas station where we clean up. Right on time. So they got your brother. Oh, shut up. That was on the radio. Who's this? His name's Mason. We got the stuff from him. What else does it say on the radio? The usual. Only you're better looking than they said. You want to see me when I'm dressed up? I'll see you, Carter. I got an interest in you. I got to get back to the shop. Come on, Carter. All right. I'll be seeing you again, won't I? 
There's no need for you to see me again. So what's this shop Jinx was talking about? Radio shop. He fixes radios. Oh. He's in the wrong business the way he can drive a car. Now, you made a crack a minute ago I didn't get. You said you had an interest in me. That's right. I did this job on credit. Holiday owes me $1,000. But Holiday hasn't got any money. What makes you think I have? Oh, I know you haven't any either. Uh, not right now, anyway. But there's a big difference between you and Holiday. She's honest. You're not. And you have certain, shall we say, ways of getting money. Am I right? Yeah, sure. But do you mind if I don't think about money for a half hour? All I want right now is milk. I haven't had any in two years. Take your time. There's no rush about payment. That's nice. There's a supermarket in the next block. Hartford's the name. Hartford. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, that stuff of mine in the back seat. Better get rid of it. How do you want it handled? I'd like the police to find it across the state line. They will. Good. Now, Mason, where does Holiday live? Marrakesh Apartments, 101. Marrakesh, 101. She goes by the name of Caldwell. Caldwell. I'm glad you got here. So am I. My truck broke down and put me behind schedule a half an hour. Good morning, Joe. Good oh, morning, Mr. Hartford. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. We're both late today. What time do you usually get here, Joe? Oh, about 9.30 if the truck don't break down. Lots of things. Well, you're not going to find them here. You'll be surprised what a man can find. Food, for instance. Will you please leave? Leave? Just got here. Seen the papers? 